Hey yo guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're checking out brand new releases from Cradle of Filth, Dream Theater, Every Time I Die and Waking the Cadaver. So it is Friday, October 22nd and a bunch of new stuff came out, a pretty diverse range of metal came out today and we listened to as much as we could. So um... Team Fish listened to more than I did. We covered uh, Cradle of Filth, Existence is Futile, um, Authority Through Intimidation, which is Waking the Cadaver's new album, um, A View from the Top of the World, Dream Theater, and Radical from Every Time I Die, which I did not get a chance to listen to, but Team Fish did. So maybe you could start us off. And yeah, we'll start off with Radical. Uh, I think this, I, I didn't know what exactly to expect with Every Time I Die. I knew they were some kind of maybe metalcore ish sound, but I put this on, I got like a post punk kind of metal chord and I and I love that kind of sound it's very raw very aggressive it makes you want to knock an entire house down <laughs> kind of reminded me of secret band if anyone's ever listened to that I know the singer from that band was in dance Gavin dance so there's that kind of connection there but yeah rem reminded me a lot of secret band and I love secret band um planet shit love that song I think that was one of the singles I want to say I heard that on the radio at some point great song um, and then you got a song like Thing With Feathers, turns the tone on his head, a bit lighter sound. And uh, I was just really liking how it's very unhinged. It's like really raw sounding, especially with this vocal performance. I just, this kind of vocals is just, oh, I love it so much. So I, I had a lot of fun with this album and I found that it did kind of play around with its tone a little bit. And uh, it wasn't just like, you know, 100% every song, but the songs were fairly short, averaging like three-ish minutes. At most, yeah, so they were somewhat short, which makes sense. I mean, you know, when you're doing a lot of punk kind of sounding songs, you kind of just explode and then bam, done. That sounds but, like uh, something I'd probably enjoy, so I'm going to definitely check yeah, it out when I get a chance for sure. I think you certainly might like some of the songs, especially because the riffs on, on a lot of these songs are really good. For nice. me, highlight tracks include Planet, Planet Ship, A Colossal Wreck, and Distress Rehearsal. Cool. Yeah, so I started out my day with Cradle of Filth. Um, they've been one of my favorite bands since I can remember for a long, long time. We've covered them plenty. On we've covered them much. Yeah, we've we've they've got albums that are on the two toe tags list. Um, we've done reactions, yada yada. So this album, I started it out, and the first half I thought was phenomenal. I think this is great. I fucking love this. Second half, I couldn't really put a super focused listen on it because I was busy doing work and things like that. But the second half felt a lot weaker to me, at least listening to it the first or second time. Songs like uh, Suffer Our Dominion, for example, super rad song. It starts off awesome, but I feel like the first half is much stronger than the second half. And I'm hoping that's not a trend on this album, the more, if, you know, once we listen to it more, because it kind of felt that way. It kind of felt like songs were starting off strong, heavy riffs, you know, the cool elements that you like, and then all of a sudden they kind of like taper, taper down a bit. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm wrong about that. Um, you know, more listens, if we get a chance, we'll definitely decide whether that is a thing or not but the first half of the album definitely was kind of like peak level as far as i can tell but i don't know what do you think about it well honestly overall this album just blew my mind like you know i remember enjoying the first single decently and the second single a lot more but just i put this album on and existential terror is just a wild opener it's the second yeah. track but it's the first like song yeah wild and crazy opener i'm thinking holy shit what's going on this isn't even one of the singles yeah really cool and song. you know necromantic fantasies i still enjoy that song as much as i did back when we reacted Rips. to it amazing riffs beautiful song um about a minute and a half into black smoke curls from the lips of war Danny Phil does one of the lowest growls I've ever heard from him, and it caught me off guard because I'm not used to hearing him growl that low. Normally, he's kind of got his, you know, his kind of unique scream that he does. So hearing that low yeah. of a growl, I'm thinking, whoa, what was that? That was the song that actually stood out to me a lot, too. That sounded like something that could have been off Cruelty and the Beast. Even the name Black Smoke Curling from the Lips of War, that's a fucking cool song title. It is. I don't care. That's a fucking cool song title, but the guitar work's awesome. It sounds like the kind of Cradle of Filth people want when they're listening to Cradle of Filth. Yeah, honestly, there are a lot of moments on that album where I'm like, oh my god, this is disgusting. Like, this is like the raw, just brutal energy you want from, you know, I guess a more classic Cradle sound, but of the softer stuff kind of emulates from like Nymphetamine and Thornography, you know, yeah. that kind of era. So you're getting kind of a mix of like early and I guess like mid-early, like yeah. mid of the, you know, the band's career. And I think that's 
Awesome. Uh, one thing I found pretty interesting about the album is that there are two interlude tracks, which kind of reminds me of the pacing that Damnation in a Day had, which had a few interludes and kind of was very long. This album is not as long as Damnation, but I, I kind of like that it had that in its pacing, which is similar yep. to the other album. Highlight tracks are like, I literally wrote like pretty much the whole thing. Like there's a whole thing from front to back. I'm just like, wow, this, you know, album's sick. So specific tracks, I mean, I mentioned a few already. You know, that kind of stood out to me, but uh, overall, like, the whole album was just great. <laughs> cool, yeah. Um, Dream Theater, a few from the top of the world. Dream Theater. Uh, I, I guess I'll start uh, with this one. So as, I guess, a Dream Theater guy, yep. um, I went into this album without too many expectations for the music, because I didn't really listen to the singles very much. I heard bits and yep. pieces of the Alien, and that was it. And right. my impression from the bits and pieces I heard wasn't the greatest, but I'm like, well... That is only bits and pieces of a single, you know, like, there's got to be a lot more to the album. And I thought it was solid. There was one major thing about this album that I really, really enjoyed, and it's they got their edge back. I think there are a lot of moments on this album where it sounds like, quote unquote, classic dream theater. And I want to say like 2000s era. So from like six degrees up to black clouds and silver linings, that kind of sound. I feel like some of that was emulated in this album. And I like that a lot because I felt that when Mike Portnoy left, Sure, people will be like, oh, the drummer this, drummer that. I think they lost a little, the band lost a little bit of their compositional style mm -hmm. when he left. And as a writer, Mike Portnoy brought an edge, a kind of really hard edge to the band that was lost. And they started to sound different, and that's okay. But I find with this album, they started to do some, you know, nastier or raunchier riffs. And I like that a lot, because you have the modern Dream Theater emulating a sound that they haven't had in a long time. So I thought that was quite nice. Um, answering the call... Was a, is a good example of that. Uh, same with Sleeping Giant and Awaken the Master. Those were kind of the main highlight tracks for me. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, his opinion as far as this goes is much more valid than, I, than mine because he's a Dream Theater fan and I'm not. But I still like listening to the Dream Theater. I'm always curious to see what's going to appeal to me and what's not. Unfortunately, none of these songs really spoke to me. One thing we both did kind of agree on though is that the vocal performance on this album is kind of bad. It's kind, <laughs> yeah. of, like, it's kind of like the, the weakest link on the album. Um, which is disappointing because you expect phenomenal vocal from Tree Theater. They usually have high tier vocals for some reason on here. They just don't cut it. Especially considering, I do recall reading about something James LeBree said like, oh, this is going to be one of my craziest vocal performances yet. Yeah. So the bar was really high for me in regards to that. And yeah. I was kind of just disappointed with it. Like, okay, it was just like, whatever, you know? Yeah, so I did listen to the album. It didn't do anything for me though. Um, but I, like I said, my opinion on this should be taken very lowly because I'm not exactly a Dream Theater fan. I do have some Dream Theater songs on my playlist. I don't hate the band, um, but we've tried covering them on this channel before. Yeah, but, I mean, you gave them you a know, good rating in that in that review. Exactly. So it's not like they're. It's not like I hate them. They have stuff that does appeal to me, but this one, at least on one listen, didn't do anything for me. Yeah, I think it's probably one of the better ones from the modern discography. So overall, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so the last album I listened to today was um, Authority Through Intimidation by Awaken the Cadaver. Mm -hmm. So Awaken the Cadaver is a band I think I might have heard one or two songs from before. I know a lot of people like them. They're kind of um, one of those bands you see popping up on people's lists here and there kind of often. Uh, but this was my first time listening to a full album. So my thoughts on it are basically... It's like it's like a both good and bad thing because I loved everything I heard. I think this is brutal mm -hmm. it's, it's got really cool elements to it they're really hitting the right marks lots of cool blast beats the guitar tones are cool the vocals are really really good but it overall just sounds like basic brutal death metal with some yeah. slammy elements in there some little this a little that but overall like what's really grabbing what's really special what's really standoutish about it and i was really having a hard time really finding stuff about that so it's easy to enjoy an album but not think it's special Right, and that's kind of the vibe I got with this. I could listen to this probably all day and be fine with it, but coming on a video and being like, this was awesome, that was awesome. There was a couple songs um, that stood out to me, like Human Chop Shop um, was a cool song. The breakdown goes really hard. Yeah. And Arbiter of Punishment also goes super hard for the breakdown. And then Threatened Physical Force has some vocals on it that are like, kind of inhuman sounding like you know a lot of people freaked out about Will Ramos in uh, Into the Hellfire um, Lorna Shore when he does all those weird gurgly zombie noises and stuff and like oh my god this kind of reminded me of that it's not that but it reminded me of it and I thought you know what people that like vocals and like the death metal type style of vocals would probably appreciate that kind of stuff and there's squeals 
There's some really nice gutturals. It's vocally pretty cool. I gotta say that, it's a strength. The rest of it felt average, typical. I felt it was not bad. I mean, I didn't dislike it, but it, you know, you kind of took a lot of the words out of my mouth. It was fine, you know? Mm -hmm. It didn't really feel like it was too much that was special. I will agree, Human Chop Shop was cool. The first third of that song is essentially a breakdown. I thought that was pretty cool. But there was a point, you know, I, was, I made a note, like I'm at the second last song of this album and it feels like the same song as the first one. You yeah. know, I felt like it did get a little bit repetitive. I liked the vocals except for the squeals. I did not like how those squeals like sound. The they just turned me off. I'm just thinking like, okay, it's They're just not for everyone. I don't know. Just on this album, I was not super huge on it. The rest of the vocals, yeah, I'm digging it. I like it. It's good. But And there's quite a few squeals too. Just, yeah, like, like in the first track when he's squealing, I'm just thinking, mm, like I don't know, it just wasn't hitting the mark there. But overall, like it's brutal, it's heavy, like, you know, it pounds your face in, but it kind of pounds your face in like, it keeps punching this part of my face over and over, and I got all this rest of face you could be punching. So, you know, I feel like the album could have done a little bit more. It is really short, like 26 minutes. It doesn't even hit half an hour. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, it's still not bad. It's just, it's fine, right? Anyways, guys, you should check out the new releases from Every Time I Die, Dream Theater, Waking the Cadaver, and Cradle of Filth. But we can only choose one album to listen to for the entire week and give you guys a review next week. And for that, we are choosing Existence is Futile. We will be listening to Cradle of Filth all week long. Give you guys our full and final review next week of this album. So be sure to come back then. For now, leave your comments down below and let us know what you guys think of these albums. Hit or misses. Just sound off down below. Give us your thoughts. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm Vile Self. I'm TV Fish. See you guys on the next one.